welcome back to the place where we are talking about the conversion of sulfur dioxide to sulfur trioxide and there we have seen that we require a catalyst. So, catalyst is required and we should go for a low temperature reaction to increase the conversion amount that means the percentage yield of the reaction for SO3. And now if we try to increase the reaction rate that means if we try to decrease the activation barrier for this reaction a high temperature we cannot go down to a very low temperature because the rate of the reaction should be sacrificed in that case. So, the optimized conditions we should know only because it is very easy to remember the optimized condition then we can vary the all these things and a medium pressure not much is only 1 to T atmospheric pressure 1 to 2 atmospheric pressure of your O2 is sufficient to go for this particular conversion and the catalyst is V2O5. So, is well known is a common textbook catalyst still we are using this one and is cheaply available also because this can also be considered as a vanadium O type of thing because it is the oxidic material of vanadium. So, vanadium pentoxide is your catalyst for your conversion which is 95 percent overall. So, which is basically utilized to ensure an adequate conversion definitely the adequate conversion for an industrial point of view. And if we can optimize this that at a temperature of 450 degree centigrade and a pressure of 1 to 2 atmosphere and the catalyst we are happy to get that particular conversion. So, the sulfur trioxide formed over there now is added to water and if we add to water that particular sulfur trioxide we get sulfuric acid, but if we add that particular one to the formed H2SO4 that means H2SO4 plus SO3. So, H2SO4 plus SO3 is giving us that particular one as H2H2O7. So, that H2H2O7 is known as disulfuric acid. You simply add up you have H2SO4 which is a concentrated one and that concentrated H2SO4 we are adding more amount of sulfur trioxide that means it is super saturated and you do not have any excess water molecule available for its conversion of that SO3 which is available over there to produce more and more H2SO4, but it will be trapped inside. So, the sulfuric acid the concentrated sulfuric acid containing excess amount of SO3 and if we write directly that formula of that particular species which is being formed over there will be H2 S2 O7. So, that is known as oleum we all know that what is oleum because in different organic chemistry reactions the pharmaceutical industry or some medicinal conversions medicinal chemistry conversions we use this particular oleum basically it is a reaction on sulfuric acid where sulfur trioxide is basically reacting very quickly what is available from that particular oleum and commercially it is known as your disulfuric acid. Then at a highly concentrated version of this the oleum is then added to water to form sulfuric acid and which is therefore, highly concentrated because in that particular case that particular oleum is again another version of your anhydride because sulfur trioxide is nothing but our anhydride of sulfuric acid which is hydrated when hydrated it gives you sulfuric acid and that produced sulfuric acid can trap further your SO3 and that SO3 giving you the oleum. So, that oleum can take further water molecule to giving you again a super saturated or highly concentrated sulfuric acid. And the catalyst this is the solid state or three dimensional structure of your V2O5. And we all know that when you write a V2O5 we will not be able to write that particular formula in a species like that that if you have two vanadium centers and these vanadium centers can have five oxygen centers which are oxide ions O2 minus and we can get a discrete dimeric form of your vanadium. 
but the molecular formula of it is such that you have the repeating unit of that one that means V2O5 whole N. So, that gives us the typical solid state structure because when we produce that from any vanadium salt or any other vanadium ore, we basically get, get that particular as a solid material and that solid material is basically in our hand and that solid material is utilized for its catalytic function. And if we look at nicely over here, what do you find if we focus our attention on this particular part or the next part or the next part, what do you see that the three consecutive part because only thing is that the orientations are different from there. What do you see that the red balls are these are basically considered as from the three dimensional x-ray structures we considered is as the ball and stick model. And in that particular ball and stick model what you see that the red balls are basically or the red spheres are the oxygen spheres. So, you have this particular gray sphere which is your vanadium center. So, vanadium center is at the center forming 5 bonds attached to it and sometimes it can be considered because when a particular center having 5 bonds to it we can have 2 regular geometries one can be square pyramidal you have a square base and one pyramidal one or you have a trigonal base and is bipyramidal one above and one below. But in this particular case you have this particular vanadium center as a square pyramidal one and you have this vanadium. So, this vanadium center is in the networking of the oxides so different oxides. So, it can be mu 2 type or mu 3 type oxide ions. And you can have for each and every vanadium centers you have one vanadium oxygen double bond that means you have the terminal oxygen attached to that particular vanadium. So, this particular vanadium center now we will see that how this one basically is utilized for its conversion. So, you have your V2O5 catalyst and everywhere we have this V O is there that means V O if we consider the charge. So, this vanadium is in the 5 plus oxidation state. So, this is V O 3 plus. So, we take this as V 5 plus for this catalytic reaction with sulfur dioxide. So, we have the sulfur dioxide and this vanadium with many number of oxidic ions that means O2 minus. So, this is the typical reaction what we can have in our hand. So, vanadium in oxide environment that we have seen that you can have the square pyramidal geometry of the vanadium. So, that square pyramidal geometry is being utilized, but since this particular reaction is a redox reaction. where we are talking about something where we can consider is that we will be oxidizing this because we are converting this VO2 to VO sorry SO2 to SO3. So, it is oxidation of SO2 molecules. So, this will be converted to SO3 plus vanadium will be reduced to tetravalent vanadium. So, this is pentavalent then we vanadium in plus 5 oxidation state and this is vanadium in plus 4 oxidation state. So, if we can have a catalyst as V 2 O 5 and even in the solid state structure it will lose some amount of your O 2 minus because this vanadium if it is in the plus 5 oxidation state and if we say that this will be converted to vanadium 4 like this V 4 plus it will be converted to vanadium O 2 and will be again converted back to your V 2 O 5. Because we are talking in terms of your corresponding catalytic cycle. So, that particular catalyst will be regenerated. So, the vanadium present in vanadium pentoxide as V 5 plus is reduced to vanadium as a tetravalent center as V 4 plus. So, we have 2 of this SO 2 and 4 of this V 4 5 plus for your electron balance the number of electron balance will give you 
twice of SO3 and 4 of your B4 plus. So, this oxygen basically what you have, so this oxygen from your air as O2 or oxygen from your vanadium center is being utilized for your formation of SO3. So, the second step is basically this is formed. So, we have to convert it that means that V in the tetravalent state, the vanadium in the tetravalent state. So, V4 plus will be oxidized to V5 plus and now your O2 is coming into the picture because we have plenty of that dioxygen molecule in our hand. So, that dioxygen molecules will be utilized for giving us that particular conversion which is 4 of B4 plus 4 of B5 plus plus degeneration of twice O2 minus. So, this will be also regenerated. So, from all these solid state reactions this is happening. So, we get that particular one is the oxidation. So, is basically that oxidation of B4 plus and which should be known as your corresponding one as the catalyst regeneration. So, it is catalyst regeneration because we are regenerating the vanadium in plus 5 oxidation state. So, the pentavalent vanadium is being formed again and again. So, we are not consuming the material that is why it is known as the catalyst for this particular reaction. So, what we will see now is that that when we have this as the catalyst and its corresponding reaction for its reduction and oxidation. Then how we can use the produced sulfuric acid, huge amount of sulfuric acid the industry is producing that huge amount of sulfuric acid and where we basically use that particular sulfuric acid. So, the most important industry we know that a very good industry for handling the petrochemicals because we have the petroleum products in our hand. So, petrochemical industry is basically utilizing it for alkylation of isoalkenes with alkenes, isoalkenes with alkenes. So, concentrated sulfuric acid. So, if we have the corresponding condensation reaction because the concentrated sulfuric acid is a very good dehydrating reagent and the corresponding isoalkanes are there. So, that can be considered as one of the isoalkane that is an isopropane type of thing. So, iso function is there. So, that iso function can be converted with respect to your different alkenes for the typical alkyl product. So, is known as the alkylation. Then after petrochemical industry we can have the utilization in chemical industry. So, the different chemical industries like making of useful inorganic chemicals. Why we are talking all these in terms of your industrial inorganic chemistry because we are only looking for what basic information, what primary chemical industry knowledge is required for production of your inorganic chemicals. So, what other inorganic chemicals we can produce with the help of your sulfuric acid what we have produced already. So, other inorganic chemicals such as hydrofluoric acid chromic acid or aluminum sulphate. So, you see by knowing the name only. The three examples are given over here as the HF, the Cr2O3 and the aluminum sulphate. How you get this one and what is the role basically for your sulphuric acid. So, hydrofluoric acid is very simple that if you have some supply of fluorine based minerals or ores or the fluoride ions F minus you have to supply H plus. So, that H plus can come from your sulfuric acid producing hydrofluoric acid. Similarly, chromic acid which is basically Cr2O3 as the oxide basically. So, that oxide basically we can get it when we dissolve the corresponding chromate or dichromate in concentrated sulfuric acid. So, potassium dichromate or sodium dichromate or potassium chromate or sodium dichromate when you go for its dissolution in sulfuric acid we get the corresponding very 
useful color also that very orange red color of your chromic acid. So, you get that particular utilization of sulfuric acid. Then aluminum sulfate that means simply from aluminum powder, aluminum ore as bauxite or any other scrap aluminum. So, throw away aluminum material which can be utilized for its reaction with concentrated sulfuric acid or some dilute version of it can give you the corresponding useful aluminum salt as sulfate. So, we are supplying sulfate anions to produce aluminum sulfate. So, any metal salts, any kind of metal salt as sulfate salt can be produced with the help of sulfuric acid. Then some example of organic products that means different dyes we can make that means sulfate dyes or sulfonation if we can go for with the help of sulfuric acid. Different explosives can make, isocyanates can be made, soaps, detergents, fibers and different pharmaceuticals are all dependent on the availability of the sulfuric acid and use of sulfuric acid. And further it is also used in material production also that TiO2, the titanium dioxide which is basically a version of its ore we call it as rutile. So, from rutile we get the pigmented or the pigment TiO2 titanium dioxide with the utilization of sulfuric acid. Then for uranium and copper extraction we use sulfuric acid and in steel pickling and in batteries. So, battery industry will be using steel pickling and the steel industry is also using this particular one acid as your regular supply. So, sulfuric acid is most essential for all these industries. So, basically what we get here that utilized in the manufacture of also the chlorosulfonic acid is also utilized for making thionyl chloride. So, some more compounds right now we will see now that this sulfuric acid how we can utilize that sulfuric acid for making of chlorosulfonic acid which is one particular variety we can think of. That means, the function of this on chlorine is your sulfonic acid function. Then thionyl chloride is also that SOCl2 that means, which can also be produced from sulfuric acid, amino sulfonic acid dimethyl sulphate and for the sulfonation of different organic substances in huge amount in the detergent industry. That means, we all know that the different detergents nowadays we call is as the different micelles. So, sodium dodecyl sulphate one such example is SDS we call. So, sodium dodecyl sulphate that particular one with the name will tell you that is the organic sulphate molecule. So, sodium dodecyl alcohol, uh, alcohol which is known as lauryl alcohol also commercially or common name of that particular molecule is the lauryl alcohol. So, dodecyl that means deca is 10, do means plus 2 that means it is a carbon number 12 bearing alcohol long chain alcohol only. So, the OH can be converted to your corresponding sulphate that means you are adding on the oxygen of the alcohol another SO3 group making it as a corresponding sulphate giving you the sodium dodecyl sulphate which is a useful micellar molecule. So, in detergent industry large amount of all these micelle in the cosmetic industry and all other finer uh, areas of this chemical industry is being utilized for the use of all these micelle materials. Then we just see another very useful compound that means, the sulfur compound the elemental sulfur we have so far we are talking about the oxidation of that particular sulfur and making of this sulfuric acid. Now, we can go for chlorination basically very simple reaction like your organic chemistry reaction or any other reactions as we all know that the chlorination of the metals as ore or mineral we can convert it to the corresponding chloride salts of that particular metal as metal ions. So, elemental nickel or elemental copper or elemental iron or elemental chrom chromium if you have the chlorination of all these metal ions can give you the corresponding chlorides as their corresponding salts. So, similarly sulfur is your non-metal component because it is the main group non-metal species. So, this 
mangrove species sulfur so we call it as a non metallic species or the mangrove species which can also be chlorinated that means we are able to make new sulfur chlorine bond and it has some useful application so since it has a useful application so definitely it is one of other value added compound so that value added compound of sulfur is your sulfur dichloride or disulfur dichloride we call H2Cl2. So, is again is manufactured not at very uh, very high temperature, but is manufactured at a low temperature of 240 degree centigrade. So, 240 degree centigrade temperature is fine for manufacture of this in a continuous process by passing again another gaseous material that means chlorine gas. Already we have seen that how we can have liquid sulfur in our hand. So, production and use of that liquid sulfur we have seen now the same liquid sulfur you can use to attract the reaction with the chlorine as a gas. So, reaction of this is not a very hazardous one also because the temperature is not very high it is only 240 degree centigrade. So, that particular temperature is useful for converting directly the S8 molecule. Now, in the chemical reaction we are writing S8 plus 4 Cl2 giving you 4 molecules of S2 Cl2. Again your delta H value you should know which is minus 58.2 kilojoule per mole. So, this H 2 C L 2 and whenever we have some compound definitely we are only talking in terms of your industrial production, its value addition, its usefulness and consumption. But as a typical inorganic chemist, so we should know what sort of molecule it is that means the structural form. The way we are discussing little bit about the corresponding catalyst structure, the V2O5 structure. Similarly, how your H2Cl2 molecule looks like because S8 molecule we all know because it is a zigzag type of thing, all sulfurs are connected, which is a crown type of molecule. So, all sulfur are connected through a crown type of molecule, where 8 of these sulfurs in a particular unit, like your P4 unit in phosphorus, the P4 which is a tetrahedral molecule where all four phosphorus centers are connected through phosphorus phosphorus bond. Similarly, in S8 all sulfur are connected through sulfur sulfur bonds and which is a crown type of structure and that is being cleaved basically. So, the molecular form of this particular species is S2 Cl2 that means, when we are breaking this particular unit as S8 into 4 units of that that means, 4 S2 units are forming. So, you will have the still intact sulfur sulfur bonds only the other thing what we are doing we are doing nothing we are just adding 2 chloride ions from the 2 sides of that S2 unit. So, you have C L S S C L which is the molecular structure of that particular molecule and if we can have some intuition or imagination related to this sort of molecule we can consider it as the corresponding structure of hydrogen peroxide. H2O2 we all know that in H2O2 we have the OO bond and two ends we have two hydrogen atoms attached to this oxygen, but is not in a linear fashion not in a angular one, but is only a open book type of structure in that open book type of structure what you can have the book what we are having. So, the connection over there is there two oxygen centers. Similarly, you can have two sulfur centers and one hand you have the sulfur chlorine bond and the other hand you have the, the other page. In one page of the book you have the sulfur chlorine bond and in the another page you have the sulfur chlorine bond on the other side. So, that particular structure is very important to know sometime because is a confusion can come over here for the next product what is your sulfur dichloride. So, from this reaction if the reaction is not a direct one and a stoichiometric one that means the chlorination of elemental sulfur we can ask is a very simple question to be asked to anybody who are going through this particular one that how you produce it and how you go for chlorination of sulfur. So, you get H 2 Cl 2. So, along with that you can have S C L 2 also that sulfur dichloride which is a byproduct and once some amount of S C L 2 is formed as a byproduct you can convert it back to H 2 Cl 2 that means this original compound. 
how you do that you do the simple thing because the stoichiometry of sulfur that means the sulfur content of sulfur the monosulfur dichloride or sulfur dichloride the corresponding amount of sulfur present in is less compared to your H2Cl2. So, you have to add more amount of sulfur. So, if you add more amount of sulfur to it you get H2Cl2 back. So, that basically tells us that H2Cl2 formation and its utilization in the manufacture of sulfur dichloride. That means, you get this as corresponding sulfur dichloride. So, that we will see in our next class possibly in detail because today just we will briefly see that H2Cl2 we are producing it from S8 and that H2Cl2 can be utilized for the production of HCl2. Not only HCl2 sulfur dichloride, but it can also be consumed for thionyl chloride, sulfur tetrafluoride SF4 and with polyols and for the production of additives for high pressure lubricating oils and cutting oils. So, these are all industrially important oils basically because the oil sector for some value added oils basically these are sometimes additive because for to increase the self light, the longevity and uh, the life of that particular oil for its useful purpose can be increased by some addition of all this material. And it can also be utilized as a catalyst in the chlorination of acetic acid. You see the very simple reaction what we are now talking at as a reagent. So, when we produce something from the sulfur source, we are producing something as your corresponding sulfur disulfur dichloride at H2Cl2 and in that particular case is we are utilizing it because if you can use this for some good purpose that one is that chlorination of acetic acid that means chlorination of acetic acid you can have two points of chlorination whether you get the acetyl chloride or chloroacetic acid that we have to find out. But the same thing what we are talking is the simple chlorination. So, the elemental chloride chlorine that means in the gaseous form is not utilized is avoided instead of that we can use H2Cl2 for that particular purpose. So, solutions of sulfur in disulfur dichloride is utilized also in the room temperature vulcanization of rubber. Earlier we have seen that elemental sulfur is being utilized. Now, solution of sulfur in disulfur dichloride. So, disulfur dichloride if it is utilized as a solvent. So, more sulfur of it will be solubilized and that can be utilized for your vulcanization. So, monosulfur dichloride or HCl2 can be produced from H2Cl2 that we will see in our next class in detail also and something here again we are adding and showing over the arrow is your catalyst that means the iodine is your catalyst. Now, further chlorination of your disulfur dichloride will give you HCl2. So, it is produced by reacting liquid disulfur dichloride in which is in your hand with the passage of gas or passing of the chlorine gas. So, chlorine gas is passed over that particular liquid at low temperature in the presence of the different types of catalyst. One most useful catalyst is your iodine, elemental iodine, solid elemental iodine. So, you have the liquid in your hand you have the gas which should be passed over that liquid and you have the catalyst bed as the solid. So, how industrially we can produce you can think of you can imagine it that you have the solid bed. So, pulverized iodine powder which is a black powder. So, you can grind it which is shiny black material. So, you can make it a powder and that particular powder if it is there and your disulfur dichloride is there and the disulfur dichloride should bring in contact with the chlorine gas such that you can go for further chlorination. That means, you take out that H2Cl2 part one part of HCl and another part of HCl. So, sulfur sulfur bond will be broken and that sulfur which is being broken from that side will be attached with again chlorine. So, it is basically like that of your HCl2 directly that one sulfur is there like your H2S. So, one sulfur having two sulfur chlorine bonds in it and you get 
that HCl2 molecule in your hand. So, we will continue this discussion in our next class whether we can have some more useful sulfur compounds because it is easy to make also once you make sulfur from your regular source and sulfuric acid in your hand. We can make different types of all these compounds which are very useful industrially. Thank you very much.